What's good, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Shots Fired. Unfortunately, it's just uh, it's just a trio. Wait, we don't have the full quartet because G life has gotten in the way for G, but we look forward to recording with her next week. So, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Michael Morgan, is riding shotgun with me. Mike, how are you doing? I'm exceptionally well, sir. Yeah, you're right. We're missing G, but she will be back, and she will be back fairly swiftly. But yeah, life is all good. Life is uh, um, even better that we have a UFC card on our terms, on our time, without the need for coffee. Wicked. Loving it. That's very, very true. And also riding shotgun by my side, Mr. No Holds Barred. You've heard him shout across Twitter and across Instagram, and he's been dropping some dope video content of late, Mr. Kairos Bodley. Kairos, how are you doing there? I'm blessed and highly favored. I cannot complain. That's good. That's good, sir. Good to hear. So, so folks, let's just get to it. Unfortunately, one of the biggest fights of the year took place last last weekend. Fights, uh, and by fight, I put in air quotes. Of course, I'm talking about Tyron Woodley against Jake Paul and that uh, eight-round boxing match, professionally sanctioned boxing match. Now, we all know the result of the fight. Tyron lost his split decision. We'll go into whether Tyron should have won or not later, but I just want to get everybody's thoughts on the uh, on the contest or on on the spectacle in in general. Did it live up to everything that you thought it was going to be? And if so, were you were you entertained? Were you entertained by the by the problem child and the chosen one going toe to toe in Cleveland or was it Cleveland or yeah, it was it was in Cleveland. But um, in fact, one thing that I actually want to touch on first of all, even before that, even before we get into the were you entertained and what did you think of the fight? The purses were recently revealed, I think just a couple hours ago by Mike Vaughn of MMA Junkie. And Mr. Tyron Woodley, he certainly made bank. He certainly made bank. He received a guaranteed $2 million up front, excluding sponsorships and excluding his respective cut of the pay-per-view points. Now, I know throughout the build-up to this fight, we... uh, we uh, well, much maligned fight. We were we were slagging it off. We were saying, yeah, we can't believe this is happening. Can't believe Tyron has lowered himself to it. But now that the facts and the figures are in, and Tyron has made a pretty pretty penny, and I'm not too sure what the tax situation is in Cleveland or what have you, but we'll just say he's got two million in the bank right now. Do you think he was right in taking the fight? And I'm gonna go to seeing as he's stateside out of the three of us. I'm gonna go to Mr. Kairos Bodley first. Sure, he's right for it, but he should still be ashamed of himself. <laughs> I'll get into that after. Yeah, but we can always count on Kairos to unload the first clip with zero hesitation. Mike, what's your thoughts on it after hearing the news that Tyron Moody made a guaranteed $2 million up front? He was definitely right for it. I mean, look, what's been happening in Woodley's career Um, especially when you look towards the latter part of his UFC tenure, has been straight up abysmal. Now, it's clear that for a long while he's checked out. It's clear that he was in it for the paycheck. It's clear that he was turning up to be paid, to be recompensed. This has been the biggest recompense he's ever had in his life. When you combine his salaries that he more than likely would have had for his last three fights. It comes nowhere close to this one fight. Okay, there's a little issue of the I love Jake Paul tattoo that he has to get around, but definitely the right decision, probably one of the best decisions Tyron Woodley has made in the last three years. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember what Woodley's highest purse is off the top of, off the top of my head, but if we're just going by what the UFC normally pays its um its, its, its champions, the the stand the highest I could think of is five hundred thousand. But even then, I don't think he would have received that because mm. that was five hundred thousand. If you were a champion of, well, not of some, not of course, he was a dominant welterweight champion at one moment in time. But if you were a champion that had some drawing power, and Ty- Tyron didn't necessarily have that. So I probably thinking maybe he was getting around the 250, 300. I'm not saying this is this is a, as gospel or, or what have you, but I mean, if you were to say the average was like 300,000, and then you just you just tally it up. I mean, yeah, he's he's made bank with this one in one fight, and like it's just it's just crazy to think think that. But 
since you brought up the tattoos, and we'll, we'll go back to whether you enjoyed the fight, this, the, the spectacle or what have you, since you brought up the tattoo. I mean, if you're Tyron Woodley, are you putting <laughs> another man's name on, on, your, on, your, on your leg? I think he said he's going to put it on his thigh somewhere, but it better, better not be the inner thigh. It better be the outer thigh where he, where he gets <laughs> But But are you, are you willing to put that tattoo, to permanently etch that on yourself just to try get a rematch? With, uh, with with Jake and obviously yeah he came close to, to finishing the fight but we'll get into his, um, his, his gun shyness later on but would you be willing to do that to try and secure that bag again and I'm going to go again to Mr. State side Kairos what's your thoughts I mean it wouldn't be the worst tattoo he has on his body and uh, I mean if I was me as a non-tattoo person I'm going to say no, but I get that a lot of people get crazy tattoos. And at the end of the day, he could always get it covered up or get something like put on it or get adjusted. So why not chase it again? But it's still like, you look desperate, bro. You look like a straight sucker. Like, bro, you just got $2 million and lost to someone who hasn't dedicated their life to combat sports. And now you're like, give me my rematch, please. All right, tattoo my name on your body. Okay. It's like, tired, you little bitch. Like what do you do? Who do? Like what? Who does that? That's just me. What do y'all think? Like I'm going too hard. Mike, I think you might be going too hard because he's been very, very coy, very, very clever. I will get the name tattooed. He's switching the terms now. I will get the name tattooed. The name was supposed to be tattooed by the loser. He lost. There should be no negotiation. But he's very slick, very smart. I'm very swift to kind of like change the terms. I will get your name tattooed if you guarantee me a rematch. Basically, he's guaranteeing that he is getting paid to put that tattoo on his body. And I think that's very smart. I would do exactly the same thing. I don't care what anybody says. Four million is four million. Imagine he gets two now for this loss and two now for the next loss. I'm willing to take the L. Four million dollars, of course. No, I'm getting that tattooed on my thigh and I'm getting it tattooed on my bicep <laughs> for the trilogy. <laughs> I would do it too, but I'm just saying like, I would too. I'm just saying though, like, I'll yeah. say what I gotta say after when we talk about it. Cause I'm not, I don't want to just go off on a tangent right now. Tyrus, I kind of understand your point of view in, in, in the sense that it seems that Tyron is com coming a a across desperate and, Granted, if if that same proposal been given to him when he's still not in the heat of the moment, at moment and he's still not feeling aggrieved, he might not not necessarily have agreed to it in, as quickly as, as as he wanted to. But yeah, it, it does kind of seem like, as you said, Jake is like, "Well, get the tattoo and we can talk." And it's like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll do it." And it's, I kind of felt that way at, at the time. But if you're feeling aggrieved, and well, obviously he was feeling aggrieved, but he also knew how what we didn't know at that moment in time. That he can make another two million dollars from this, so, <laughs> yeah, so I think we could we can cut him some slack with the the quickness of his. It's business. just the optics, though. It's like you're a forty year old man begging a twenty five year old for a paycheck when you should have been managing your money a little bit better, and you were given an opportunity to display your superiority and didn't do that on top. It's just all the optics. It just doesn't look good it doesn't it doesn't look good congratulations though for chasing this bag what's to say that you get this stupid tattoo and jake's like no yeah that <laughs> now what because <laughs> that's he was clear do. he was clear show me the money as in show me the contract i'm in i'm definitely in anyway you skip past this very slickly would you be getting yourself tattooed on your body, Chisanga Malata, for two million racks? Yeah, I'd do it for 200,000 racks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd do it for 200,000. <laughs> Come on now. I, I would. I would. Uh, I mean, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, 200,000, as long as there's not like a duration of how long I have to have the tattoo for, if you know what I mean, then I'd. I yeah. thought it was in perpetuity and he's not allowed to cover it up. Ooh, it has to be of a certain dimension as well. And it has to be visible if you're wearing shorts. There's some serious stipulations here. Yeah. And you I just mean, cheapened yourself. I offered you 2 million. You said you did for 200,000. Yeah, I, I heard I'm that. Saying, so I'm like, wow. Like, no, I'm saying, I'm saying like, 
because it's all relative. Like, obviously, Tyron Woodley has a lot more money for me than he can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, 200,000 is probably my equivalent. I'm not saying I'm bowling by any extent of the imagination. I mean, like, I'm still living in rented accommodation, but 200,000 is probably the same. Like, if you're putting it in terms of relevance, it'd probably be the same as 2 million to Tyron, if you know what I mean. But yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So let's go, going back to, let, let's dissect the fight. Um, the scorecards, I, I, I didn't agree with the judge who thought Tyron only won uh, two, two rounds because, I mean, I don't know. And no, in fact, no, no, let's not even go to the scorecards. The referee, the referee made a big mistake in that fight, a huge, huge mistake in that fight in the fact that when Jake was doing the stanky leg in the ropes and he was actually holding himself up with, there's a photo of him, like his arm, like holding up on the rope. Why was that not scored as a knockdown? Why is that not? Because if the ropes are not there, Jake Paul probably hits it, like hits the, his backside on the, on the, on the canvas and maybe even hits his head off the back of the, of, on the back of the ring. Now I'm not saying that blah, blah, blah. Yeah. If that was the case and Tyron would have won the fight, or what have you, but that's a serious, serious error because you see that in boxing when fighters, when they get hit and they then they dip into the ropes or they lean back into the ropes, it gets it's get rules of knockdown. I mean, so the official made a big mistake in in my book in that in that sense. And Kairos, you've come close to the screen because uh, it seems as if you're not in agreement with that stance. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you. This is the most Tyron Woodley thing ever. I'm so sick of this bullshit. I'm so tired of it. You want to know what? Tyron Woodley might be one of the dumbest people on the planet. What's his biggest problem with striking? What's the, what's the biggest problem? Well, I'd say, well, I wouldn't say it would be striking. I would say it was uh, the volume of strikes. Yes. So aggression and volume. Who does he have come in as a guest coach for him? I know you. <laughs> hey, with her. Hey, whether yeah. you have the most defensive and selective boxer of all time, right? I know, I know pretty boy Floyd was, wasn't always passive. He was aggressive early on, but that's not who he is right now. That's not who he is right now. You choose Floyd Mayweather to come in as a guest coach. Then you go out there and immediately come out in a Mike Tyson stance for about 10 seconds. Like, oh, he's about to throw something. You throw one hook and then go back to old Tyron Woodley throw. You deserve this. You, I don't care what the ref did. I don't care about the scoring. I don't care about the judges. You have 40 plus experience, years of experience in combat sports and fighting. Every single inclination of evidence will point to you knocking this kid out because he's only been training boxing for three to four years. I don't care that he has millions of dollars to train with the best boxers on the planet. I don't care that he has access to these things. I don't care that he has to make a living. Other He doesn't have to make a living otherwise. That's the same scenario for you. Combat sports is literally your job. You aren't working another job. You have access to some of the best trainers and training camps in the world too. And you had a head start on them. And you have power. I don't care about any excuse about scoring. I don't care about the rep. I don't care. You made a fool out of yourself. You look like a straight bozo with all the shit talking that you were bringing forth and how much everyone else was hyping you up. With, oh, he's just a YouTuber. He's a... This is just bozo territory. I'm like, I, I'm at this point. I'm so upset because it's like, I've been defending this motherfucker tooth and nail for so long. From the Colby shit with the... Black Lives Matter, every single time that someone asked you a question, they gave you an opportunity to speak on Black Lives Matter, and you just didn't say shit like a dummy. And then when it came time to the fight starting, you stuck, you extended your fist to Kobe, and Kobe walked away. It's like, you're a fucking bozo, bro. You, you, you're just not smart. You're just not smart. Every single thing that you, every opportunity that you have to do something, you do something wrong. You, do, you, you just do the wrong thing every single time. I don't feel bad for him. I am embarrassed to be a fan of MMA. I'm a, embarrassed to be a fan of him. I'm not going to watch him compete or do anything ever again. I'm not going to listen to the music. I'm unfollowing him on social media. If anybody ever even asks me about Tyron Woolley, I'm going to pretend like I don't know who that is. Even if they say, you a casual, you don't know him, I'm like, I don't know who he is, and I'm not going to research him. I am, I am cleansing myself of Tyron Woodley. I'm done. I'm I'm done with this. I'm done with him. Okay, you might be done with 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 Tyron Woodley, but one thing I kind of want to um, to 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 pull you back on is the notion that this is this is bad for MMA. It's only bad for mm -hmm. it would only be bad for MMA if Jake Paul came in and smoked him in the octagon. Yeah, if, if you know what I mean. So like, yeah, 
I I, I kind of understand the the notion which you're which you're banding about, but I wouldn't say it's bad for MMA per se. If you know what it like, if yeah. I want I, I want to add to what you just said there in terms of it being bad for MMA because I think MMA got a win here and it was a uh, I I don't think enough is being said about this win. You've got someone in boxing, you've got somebody who shouldn't actually give a shit about MMA advocating for fighter pay. Now I know where you're probably thinking that this is going, but it's not. We all know that this was a needle by which Jake Paul was going to actually poke Dana White with because he likes to play the heel. He likes to be adversarial. He likes to be the contrarian. But the fact is he got Dana White's attention and yet again, the prospect or the actual subject of fighter pay becoming a real discussion has been pushed to the fore. We have to actually give props to Jake Paul for that. As unpalatable as it seems, as unpalatable as it sounds, this is a fact. You can't get away from that. Because of him bringing that into the conversation, I didn't hear Tyrone Woodley talking about it. He is the person that should be talking about how much he is earning. He is the person that should be talking about fighter pay and how much and why that he has chosen this route. But he didn't, it was Jake Paul. And whilst I've got the microphone, I want to give props to Anthony Taylor. I know we haven't got to that discussion yet. If you are actually going to segue into that, Chisanga, I apologize for stealing your thunder. But props to Mr. Anthony, keeping it real. Because the way that I look at it is a lot of people counted him out. A lot of people, just like myself, and I have to put my hand up to this, thought he was going to go in there and get starched. He should have, given that. The caliber, so-called caliber of Fury, the lineage, where he's coming from, his camp, the fact that he is a quote unquote proper boxer. Well, he kind of made himself look like an ass considering that didn't actually dispose of um, Anthony Taylor in the way that he said that he would. But anyway, I digress. But getting back, I think we need to give more props about this discussion which is being had about fighter pay because of the bear being poked by Jake Paul. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you in, 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 in that sense. But I mean, it's not gonna lead to any tangible change whatsoever. I mean, the UFC are just gonna ride out the storm in terms of in terms of fire pay. Dana White's just gonna ride out the questions or or, or that are gonna come his way. And the status quo is just gonna just gonna be the same. The only way, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, the only way this is gonna happen is if fighters unionize, if fighters come together and just decide, you know what, we don't, if we all decide we're not gonna fight for the machine, then the machine has to change. But you're not gonna have that. And I, I think there was, uh, I can't remember who it was on Twitter, put a side by side. I think Kevin Lee spoke about a fighters union and then somebody else directly put smiling Sam Alvey quotes right next to him. He's like, yeah, we don't need a fighters union. Everything's fine with the UFC. And I think Kevin Holland even said something similar on the MMA hours saying that, oh yeah, I'm more than happy with my pay with the UFC. I mean, yeah, you might be more than happy with your pay right now, but when it comes to a few years down the line and you feel like you need to be reimbursed for the, for the years per in and the, the name and the brand that you've built, that's not gonna be the case because you've just, you've, you've tried in no way, shape or form to change the status quo. I get that, yeah, you don't have to, um, you should be careful of biting the hand that feeds you and, and, and what have you. But at the same time, you can't tell me that Kevin Holland doesn't want more money. And if he wants more money, you have to speak out when given, given a platform. And I think Tyron Woodley should have done that as well, but I kind Thank of you. got, I kind of got the idea uh, and the, the sense that when uh, like some of the interviews he was doing, I think it was in particular when he was on the MMA hour that he, he thought that if he got a vicious KO, that maybe a route back to the UFC would be there just in the, just in the way that he was, he was talking like, I don't, cause he was, he was talking about all sorts of opportunities popping up and he's like, Hey, you never know what might happen or, or, or something like that. Uh, when Ariel put uh, his UFC run to him and then he was replying with saying that, Oh yeah, I could get a knockout and then you never know what might happen afterwards. So I think that maybe he was just thinking, right. I'm, I don't want to disparage the UFC too much, but I, I also have to say as well that he did also um, mention the, the period when he felt that 
the promotion were against them, which if we're being truthful, <laughs> they, they were <laughs> like, they, they were to a certain extent. Mm. And, but yeah, it just seemed to me that a, a goal was an open goal was missed in terms of, in terms of fight or pay. And perhaps it was because he knew that he had $2 million coming his way. Like come Monday morning, he was going to have $2 million. It would be a millionaire. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I'm sure he is already, but he'd have $2 million in the bank. But yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Again, it's a fight on such a huge platform, such a global platform as well. I, I mean, the only, the only other fighter that I can think of would have a similar, similar reach in terms of, in terms of eyes on, on, on the sport would be Connor. Like during a Connor fight week, can you imagine the reverberations of Connor said during fight week for, uh, for his last fight? Oh yeah. Fighter pay shit. The UFC needs to pay their fighters more. Yeah. Can you imagine that? And now just, now, I'm not saying that the same amount of eyes were on the Jake Paul fight this weekend, but if Tyron had come out and said that at the start of the week, oh, yeah, the UFC are and shit, they need to pay their fighters X amount, mm-hmm. I'm going to pay $2 million for mm-hmm. an eight-round boxing match yeah. and this is my professional boxing debut. I mean, that would just, that, that would force some sort of action. Yes, it would, yes, it would well and truly close the door for him and uh, at Zufer and, and, and probably ruin any commentary gigs that he would get in the future. But if he was to do that, then that's, I just think that when you have a platform like that, it's incumbent on you to highlight the issues that you yourself have gone through and that your fellow athletes and fighters are going through. And I think he missed an open goal. And you're talking about fellow fighters and uh, fellow athletes. I think you kind of like missed an opportunity when you were talking about how much Jake Paul was paid and how much Tyron Woodley was paid and the rest of the card you forgot that aspect, if true, is huge. And that is Jake Paul reined in how much he was being paid so that the people on the card underneath him could be paid and rewarded (laughs) exponentially. Now that for me is a big deal. That for me sets the bar, that for me sets the standard and it gives a blueprint to how this conversation of fight pay could actually be cascaded into the UFC. No, I, I I agree. I'm not 100 percent sure if um if that's if, if that was for the for the purses overall purses. Maybe he's be uh his respective uh, cut of the pay per view isn't going to be the same or mm. what have you. But if if true, yeah, then it's just it's it's a damning it's, huge. Indi- it's a damning indictment on on not just the UFC but mixed martial arts promotions in general. Because mm. let's let's not be around the bush. I'd, we know some Bellator fighters who ain't getting paid that well as well. So, but yeah, it would be a damning indictment on mixed martial arts if some 24 year old YouTuber is providing, <laughs> is, provi- is providing uh, boxers and a former UFC champion with more money than the promotion itself could do. It's Kairos, I can see you're itching. You're champing at the bit. To- you know what I hear? Do you know what I hear right now? I hear him collecting W's after W's after W's and Woodley taking yet another L. The whole, him not speaking up about fighter pay literally makes no sense. You're no longer in the organization. You just got paid 2 million. If you fight him again, you're going to get paid another 2 million. You literally have nothing to lose and you still don't say anything. You still don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. That is a serious problem. That's a massive, think about that for a second. And you Mm. could say, oh, he might have a potential route back into the UFC. Okay, well now you definitely don't though. Okay, let's just say for argument's sake, let's just say for argument's sake, had you gone out there and knocked him out, you would have gotten a shot back. You didn't, you lost. Now you're definitely not going back to the UFC. And now you have an opportunity to chase another 2 million if you get the tattoo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now you could have spoken out against spider pay and you still didn't again. You were given multiple opportunities to prove that you have a spine, but it turns out you don't. You lack it. At 40 years of age, you continuously make dumbass decisions, mm-hmm. don't say the right thing, or don't say anything at all. What type of person are you? What type of person are you? I, 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 this is what I, every time we talk about fighter pay, it's people like Tyron Woodley who are going to be the obstacles and the pillars stopping progression from moving forward. People like that who are just like, well, I'm not going to say anything because I got too much to lose. But now I don't have anything to lose and I still don't want to say anything because I'm focused on other things. But now I'm not focused on other things that I still don't feel like talking about or addressing because it's I'm choosing what I want to say when I want to say it. I, he posted a video on his on his IG today about Kanye West talking about 
I don't, I'm afraid of saying the wrong things or I don't want to say the right things. I just want to say, I just want to be, I just want to exist. That's such a great way to not take accountability. That's the perfect way to not take accountability. And that's a lot of the things that go through our mind. I'm not just factoring the events. I'm factoring stuff that I see you post about. I'm factoring in the things I've seen you say in the past. That's mm -hmm. why I'm so critical about him right now. Cause I, there's too much knowledge coming in and out from what I've seen from you to ignore this. I hope you get that tattoo. You get that fight again and you lose again. And your legacy goes from dog shit to liquid shit. I hope all the worst for you and any person like you who doesn't want to better the lives of your colleagues, of your fellow employees, and even of yourself. Because people like you are worse than shit. You, you're just terrible people. Terrible people. The fact that a kid who grew up in a wealthy household, the fact that a kid who didn't have to need anything in life understands that she still needs to advocate for the lesser common denominator mm. and is instilling that in other people and you don't. That's a problem. Yeah, well, Kairos, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like you think Tyron Woodley's trapped in the sunken place. He is the sunken space itself. All right. Well, I, I, I don't know what else we could say about Paul, Paul versus Woodley, but in, in fact, quick fire question. Mike, would you watch the rematch again? 100% no, because I didn't watch the original <laughs> fight. Thank you so much to David Cameron, the new member of the team who broke down the fight in bite-sized chunks so that I didn't actually have to watch it. I think that type of consumption is how you actually view a fight like Jake Paul versus Tyrone Woodley. I couldn't sit and watch that. No way. No self-respecting person would. But... I can view it through another man's eyes who breaks down the highlights for me. Thank you, David Cameron. Yeah, D David Cameron, I loved his breakdown of uh, the, the the true Jordy. Remember he said that yep. Us Usman and Covington were the greatest welterweights of all time. <laughs> Look at Kairos's face. Kairos, you need to do a, a similar breakdown video of this, of this as well. I'll send you the link. But okay. the, way, the way David just cut it down and just... He, he didn't even he didn't even criticize the true Jordy as a as a person or whatever you or slam his lack of MMA knowledge. He came he with just, facts. He just spat facts and sliced and diced perfectly. Mm. Now, anyway, Kairos, would you watch uh, Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley too? I get an opportunity to see Tyron Woodley fail again. Absolutely, <laughs> love it. I need that negativity in my life. Seeing you fail, that's the shit. And the words of Drake: Seeing you fail, that is the shit. All right, moving on. Kyra, seeing as you had the mic before I, I took it back from you, what do you have to bring to the table today? Before I go, I know I'm looking like a hater and I just want to let you guys know I am a hater. So if you guys <laughs> want to call me a hater, yes, I, that is me. Kyra's Miley is a hater. Anyway, he let's says, talk about- it's like, No, 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 I need, I need to interrupt. I need to interrupt you. You're declaring yourself a hater, but for the, uh, for, for the listeners, they can't see that there's a, there's a cross and it's a God is right behind you. <laughs> Jesus is just pinned to the cross right behind you. Right He's like, yes, you are. Yes, yes you are. I see <laughs> you. Uh, Jesus is saying, thank you for being truthful, my son. He's like, <laughs> This is all I wanted. This is all I wanted from you. <laughs> all right, Kairos, the mic is officially yours again. Since we're talking about double standards of fighter pay, let's let's continue going down that path. We mentioned Sam Alvey at the beginning. He, I can't remember the last time he's won a fight. I really cannot. I'm trying. I'm not even trying to be disrespectful. It might have been. He might be on like a six fight losing streak. Maybe like six fights and then one draw, something like that. Crazy, mm -hmm. and he continues to get fights. He continues to get pretty prominent spots on cards as well. He's not, he's not Facebook prelims. He's, he's main card or close enough to main card every single time. Now, Kevin Lee has lost what? Two out of his last three? Uh, so he lost, he lost the, this past weekend. He lost to Charles Oliveira. He beat Gregor Gillespie. And then he lost to... RDA. RDA, yes. Okay, so he has lost three out of his last four. Okay. Who else? Who is another fighter on the chopping block? Oh, Darren Stewart. Darren Stewart has lost what? Two of his last three? 
he lost it. So Darren lost to he lost to Jacoby this past weekend. He lost to Eric Anders. There was the no contest. And then there was a previous defeat. And I can't remember who that was. Kevin to. Holland. It was Kevin, Kevin Holland. Was the yes. other one. Okay. So three fighters right there who are on skids. I'm not going to sit here and try and be biased about they're, they're on skids on downward spirals. But of those three, which one is the worst? Of those three, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not saying this, but uh, <laughs> okay, skill wise and te technique wise and whatever, uh, it's Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey is the worst out of those three options, and uh, an ability and performance in the cage and record wise right now, he <laughs> is the bottom tier of the bottom tier right now, and I have not heard Dana White speak a single iota about that man losing his contract or not being able to get fights for him. He, it's the same status quo from Sam Alvey. We're going to get you another fight next week. They talks about Kevin Lee in the post-fight press conference. Daniel's like, I'm not sure about Kevin Lee's future in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Then, if there wasn't even any talk about Darren Stewart, it was like, all right, he's no longer in the U-side of testing pool. Get him the fuck out of here. Get him, get him out. There's some people surmise that because Sam Alvey took that stand against a fighter's union, that's what's gotten him immortality. There's some people saying he has Dana White's nudes. There's some people saying whatever reason it is. My problem with it is this. If you're going to cut all three of them, fine. I won't say shit. I'm not going to say shit because that's fair. But if you're going to pick and choose, I feel like there needs to be a clear criteria on how do you decide who's getting cut? How do you decide who's on the hot seat? And how do you decide who needs to get a win. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think I have the solution. I have the answers for everything if you haven't noticed this. I think that if you are on a three fight losing skid and you lose the fourth one, you're gone. There is no, oh, it was a split decision or oh, it was a, you lose four in a row, you gotta go. You gotta go. Sure, every organization needs gatekeepers. Sure, every organization needs people who can be tune-ups. Sure, 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 sure. But you can't lose four in a row. And the highest promotion in, the organ in, like, in all of sports, you can't lose four in a row because there are people who are trying to come in through the revolving door anyway. We can replace you with people who can fulfill the role and they have fresh opportunities and fresh records and haven't fought everybody in the division and they aren't on a losing skid. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just upset about the time Woodley thinks still. I had a train of thought and just Woodley's just fucking my head up right now. Y'all, <laughs> Mike answer talk. I'm, I'm still upset with Woodley. I, I, had, I knew where I was going. I just lost track of it. No, 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 Kairos, I, I agree with you, but it used to be like, I'd say maybe like 10 or yeah, about 10 to 12 years ago, the standard, the standard for being cut was if you lost three, that was it. You were gone. Do you remember, Mike? It used to be three losses in a row and, yeah. you, and you're bounced. And, and you weren't coming back. Yeah. And you, yeah. How that, long ago would you say that was? Uh, Five, ten years ago. About, about 10 years ago. Probably about 10 years ago. I'd that say. boy, Jake Ellenberger, went on like a 52 fight losing skid. <laughs> I don't think they, okay right <laughs> I, I I can't remember Jake Ellenberger's uh, record off the top of my head but um okay it may if, not 52 fights obviously but yeah more, <laughs> no, I'm sure surprising there was there was maybe th three or four losses in a row but I remember the first time I was shocked a fighter got another opportunity after losing three in a row was when Dan Hardy yeah fight against um chris lytle because he lost three in a row he lost to gsp mm -hmm. he lost to condit and then he lost to rumble johnson now maybe the ufc were thinking okay he's just fought three absolute killers in a row and we'll, we'll cut him a bit of slack and what have you but i also think there was a bit of at the time dan was one of the most prominent fighters in the uk and they know that mm -hmm. he had a big following so i think that also played a a role in their decision to keep him on but then afterwards he got um who did he fight in his next fight? It was um, like, it's Chris Lytle. He lost to Chris Lytle. Um, I can't remember where that was, but yeah. So then he went four, four in a row, four, four defeats in a row, Dan Hardy. And this was like 2011, I want to say. So about 10 years ago. Yeah, 10, 10 years ago. And then he was given another fight. He was given another fight. I, be um, I believe, uh, who, who would, my memory's for, uh, Dwayne Ludwig. It's Dwayne Ludwig. He, he fought. He, uh, yeah. So he's given another opportunity after four fights in a row, and I was baffled. I was just like, Jesus. So not only was he given a shot, for three, three, three losses in a row, because that used to be the UFC's UFC's protocol. If you lost three in a row, boom, you were gone. But yeah, I, I, that was the first time I was shocked. And as it pertains to 
Dana White's uh, comments about Sam Sam Harvey. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't want to sound bad or whatever, but I don't. What, what does Sam Alvey have in Dana White? Like, do you know? What, do you know what I mean? He he's lost. His, his last win, Mike and I were just talking about this before the podcast, was in June 2018. Now, I know that was like in, in terms of chronology and time, that's not, that's not that long. But considering how many fights he's had in between, it's, it's a lot. It's long. And he's winless in his last seven, if I believe. And I think, yeah. He's that's Obama administration. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, Obama administration. Okay, he was winless in his last seven. Uh, yeah, his winless his last seven. One was a no contest at UFC 254 against Dion. Um, and yeah, I just, it it baffles me that fighters are getting cut after three after three losses, but yet you have Sam Alvey. And this is, um, this is no disrespect to Sam whatsoever, um, that he's still retained in the roster. And Dana White, he said that, oh yeah, when you fight your heart, oh, like him, blah, 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 we're going to keep giving him fights. That that was that was words to those effect of basically what he said. That pretty much what you said about about Sam, and then to hear that Kevin Lee is potentially going to be cut, and like or he's being cryptic with it, and basically I think just alluding to the fact that yeah he he could be gone. It's it's baffling, but if you actually just think about it, you think in terms of contracts, like we don't know what contract Sam Alvey is on. Sam Alvey might be getting twenty and twenty for all we know. Or what have you? That he could he could be getting that. And Kevin Lee, I'm assuming, is getting paid pretty well. So I'm assuming the UFC would be thinking, right, we could get X amount of money off of the um, of the wage book if we get rid of him. But yeah, it's so that 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 that's my theory behind why Dana White is keeping smiling Sam, or other, or maybe just Dana likes him. I, I I don't know. But either way, if if Sam Alvey stays. And Kevin Lee gets cut, then there's something seriously, seriously fucking wrong. But it doesn't make sense. Okay, with the amount of UFC bouts that Sam Alvey has, he's probably over twenty and twenty, especially with the new Venom deal. I think I'm. I feel pretty oh, confident. Okay, yeah, saying yeah. So I was just, I was just saying twenty and twenty, just for a random figure. Yeah, so I know. Yeah. So he's, he's not getting paid any like. He, I wouldn't even say he's in the mid to high tier of earners. Mm. And then I, yeah, I there's, there's another tier of like higher earners. So like I'd say. John, Habib, and Connor in their own tier, little, little tier, and then you got higher earners and you get mid to higher earners. Yeah. So I'm saying there's still cheaper labor that you could hire in place of him, though. And I'm saying labor because that's what they're treating it as. I don't, I'm not saying labor because that's how I see them as. Yeah. So you're, you have the, you have the Tuesday Night Contender Series, you have Tough, and you have, I forget the other show. You <laughs> could easily get someone to replace them for half the price. Any mail today? Yes, sir. Mail right here. Also, there's a person waiting to have you call them about the food bank as well as um, running out the gym. Yeah, I'll put it all into your door. I'll put all and everything underneath your door. Oh, okay. All right. This goes to growing minds with this food. Give this to your dad. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna stay the whole day today. Huh? No, I'm just recording a podcast with my fellow combatants here. They're in the UK, so let me just finish this. And I'll go talk oh, to I'm you. After. No, no, I'm saying you're staying the whole day. Yeah, and the day's over. What do you oh, mean? Yeah, the day's over. Chain, my friend. Come on now. <laughs> this is my business. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As you're keeping saying. that in, <laughs> and keeping that in, <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> that you guys think that I show for this? Literally, how I am. <laughs> this is literally how I am. <laughs> shows a dedication to the to the podcast, and Mr. Bodley is doing this whilst he's on the clock. That's right, doing the Lord's work. Look at that cross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to oh, your point, man. you were saying that basically the UFC is treating fighters as uh, as labor, and you're saying that they could bring in ch cheaper fighters. Yeah, and I'm saying they're breaking their whole criteria for this. If it's we we need cheaper people who are going to fight more and win, he is the perfect example of someone you need to get rid of and put someone in for. And it doesn't make sense why he's not gone. It doesn't. Mike, what's your thoughts? You know, it's the old <laughs> adage of um, street Jesus. Dana White, privilege. When you think mm. about it, 
-hmm. When you think about it, if he likes you, if you are flashy and flamboyant, if you are the company guy who come, or basically pays the company line, I'm thinking of a Cerrone, I'm thinking of a smiling Sam Alvey, which basically they were running as far away as they could um, from a fighter's union and fighter and anything to do with fighter pay. They are very, very quiet when it comes to anything that will piss the UFC off. I think it does boil down to Dana White privilege, but that actually kind of cuts um, across the spectrum of, are you actually delivering when you get in the ring in terms of entertainment, sorry, in terms of the cage, in terms of entertainment? Because I half expected Mark Diacasey to get cut when he lost to um, Hasperat. Do you remember? Um, um, yeah, that was he was on a three, three fight. Months. Yeah, that, you're correct. He went on. Yeah, two. he was on a three fight uh, losing streak, and I seriously thought, and you know, for me, it would have been a travesty because you know I'm a big fan of Mark D. Casey. I thought that he was actually going to get cut because of that, but no, he got a stay of execution and got a tougher, I think, opponent in Joseph Duffy. Fact is. The sort of Damocles was removed because again he put on a stellar performance, a mature performance against Joseph Duffy. I think it really does boil down to arbitrary decisions made by Dana White. If he likes you, if you're delivering in his eyes, then you're not getting cut. And that's why we are seeing Sam Alvey still in the octagon, still in um, our consciousness, and that despicable grin of his is indelibly etched in my brain and it shouldn't be but the fact is he's got a shtick that Dana White likes it's as simple as that Dana White privilege I'd understand the Dana White privilege thing holding up if Sam Alvey was involved in fight after fight of the night after fight of the night after fight of the night but I've just checked his record and I think he's only been involved in two fight of the nights during his during his time in the UFC it's not about that it's, do I like this fellow? Does he do something for the company in terms of upholding the sort of things that people are trying to bring down and that is fighter pay and unionization? Is he an ally? Is he a company guy? So many things Sam Alvey ticks off, he really does. Okay, he's not a stellar fighter by any means or stretch of the imagination, but he is a company guy. He's an ally. He is basically someone that Dana White can call on when he needs him to actually shut his mouth about fighter pay and be vociferous when it comes to anything to do with unionization. Yeah, and I mean, I just remember, I remember, those quotes having a jarring effect when that interview came out, but seeing them again this weekend, just made me, this past weekend, just it just made me realize once again that this is a very individual sport and the greater good is far too often overlooked for personal gain. And again, I don't think we're going to see another union for maybe, well, another 10 years, maybe if, yeah. they were, if, if at, at this rate, but. Yeah, the status quo is not going to change. But anyway, let's move on from the, the doom and gloom of the lack of a fighter, fighter's union. <clears throat> by the time we get a fighter's union, my hairline would have fully receded back to here. So <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be gone. But moving on, Mike, I think you want to chop it up about this weekend's prime time cards. Yes, people, I said prime time because it's a thing of beauty for us Europeans. Nine o'clock main card. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be tremendous. The card formerly known as UFC London has now been repositioned in Vegas. UFC Vegas 36 takes place starting at 6 p.m. or is it 6.30 p.m. UK time. It's going to be a thing to behold. But, you know, it's not without its troubles because we were originally going to be, I think, presented with one of the finest cards that we've seen on these shores for a long while. That's when it had Nathaniel Wood. That's when it had Mark T. Casey. That's when it had Paul Craig. That's when it had Lerone Murphy. Now, it's been mercilessly cut down in terms of injuries, pullouts, visas, yeah. all manner of, um, of, 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 of hindrances. Now, what we have um, is still pretty decent. But what I wanted to do is, you know, instead of the whole previewing of the card, I wanted to make it a little bit spicy, a little bit interesting. 
Okay. I want us to agree that we stand by these forfeits, which I feel that should be in play if we get our fight picks wrong. We're going to do away with the usual press-ups, <clears throat> or as you, um, you Americans call them, push-ups, right? Yep. Now, we're going to go through the main card, and we are going to pick our winners, who we feel are going to come away with a victory. But if we get our picks wrong, there will be a forfeit. Now, you get to choose one of two forfeits. So are we agreed that we're, we're up to bat? We're up to play this game. Are we going <clears> to agree to follow through <clears throat> on this? All right. Well, okay. Well, I suppose, well, I don't know. We're agreeing to something. We don't know what the forfeits are, man. Well, exactly. Exactly. It's difficult to... This, I have to say, takes the form of you both having to purchase a very small amount of alcohol, I would say like a hip flask. It could be whiskey, it could be rum, your favorite tipple, but it has to be something that you can put into a shot glass. Okay. See, shots fired, shot, see what I'm doing there? Nice anyway. you. It's you, all right. So that's the first thing. Secondly, secondly, there will be a choice of forfeit. So you can either take shots or there is an additional forfeit which I'm going to reveal now. But before I reveal that forfeit, remember you've got a choice between shots or this forfeit. Okay. Each member or each matchup on the card has its individual forfeit. Is that making sense so far? Okay, I get you. So the shots applies for all of it, but then for each individual fight, it's a separate, separate forfeit. Okay. If, if you don't want to take the shot. Okay, yeah, correct. Yeah. So are we bought into this? Can I get your tacit agreement? your implicit agreement that you're taking part in this now. Okay, I'm down. Okay, Kairos, Bodley. Yes. Okay, so yes. now that you're in, we're gonna go through the main card. And like I say, we're gonna do our picks. And on the next show, we're gonna go through how we each fared. Now be ready on the next show with your shot of either, sorry, your, flask of whiskey <laughs> yeah we're gonna do this at the beginning of the show okay <laughs> okay so first up then ufc vegas 36 on the main card first up is paddy pimlet 16 3 and 0 a uh, cage warriors mainstay against luigi vendorami vendramini sorry i'm gonna go first in this I have got Paddy Pimlet. Paddy Pimlet, I feel, will be victorious. I've got a feeling that this is a, you know, there are no easy fights in the UFC, but considering that Paddy Pimlet is 16-3 and Vendramini is 9-2, and two, and, you know, he's pretty proficient now on the feet as he is on the ground. I see Paddy Pimlet coming away with this, a spectacular um, victory, I think probably in the first or the second round, probably by TKO or a submission. I do see him with a finish. I see him making a big statement in his UFC debut. Now, if I get this wrong, I either have to take two shots of my whiskey or rum, it more than likely be rum, mm -hmm. or I can change my picture, my Twitter picture, for 48 hours to Donald Trump. <laughs> okay. Okay. So two shots of whiskey or rum is the forfeit. I'm going with Paddy Pimblett. Kairos, who are you going Patty, with? Paddy and um, I'm just going to take them shots. I feel confident in this. <laughs> yeah. I feel confident in this. Same here. I'm taking the shots just for the record. I'm taking the shots on this one. Um, Chisanga. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, the, somebody's got to be a contrarian, right? <laughs> Even though, like, nah, you know what? No, it doesn't. Is this the fight you want to do that for? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, I was about to say. Nah, I think, I think Patty's going to come up with something something special in, uh, in, in his debut, whether he throws one of his flying triangles or, or what have you. I'm going Patty Pimlet by, by a submission. By submission. Okay. 
Moving on then, in the light heavyweight category, we have Modestus Bukowskis versus Khalil Roundtree Jr. Now on this, it's three shots if you miss the mark in terms of your choice. Mm -hmm. Or you have to change your picture to Alex Scafidi. <laughs> Yo. For 48 hours. Okay. I'm going with changing my picture to Alex Scafidi for 48 hours. If I miss the mark here, and I'm going with Modestus Bukowskis. 11 and 4 against Khalil Roundtree Jr., who's 9 and 5, with one no right. contest. Am I gonna be home that day? Or am Chisanga. I gonna be at work? Chisanga. I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of the Baltic Gladiator. He's had uh, a tough, tough run of it in the UFC so far. Two fights kid. His last fight was a split decision loss, I believe. No, it wasn't a split decision loss, but the judges fucked it up. I'm going with Modestus. I'm riding with Modestus all day, man. All day. And my fourth fit will be shots, man. I can't be. I can't be <laughs> You risking that, bro. Where's your confidence, man? Where's your confidence? It's three shots, by the way. Three shots. I, that's cool, man. Eat those shots for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, man. Kyrus Bodley. You know, for the sake of this being entertaining and fun, <laughs> for this being, because I could, I could do shots all day. Oh well, I lost all of them. I guess I got to take twenty shots in the comfort of my own home. Like, no, I'm doing the picture. <laughs> 48 hours but who are you picking Trakowskis I can't bet on Khalil Roundtree no more I'm sorry Khalil you blew it bro I, I think I think he's the next to get cut too okay. I don't know what, what, what is, is Khalil on a on a bit of a skid right now I don't know it's not good I know it's not good right now someone punch that up <clears throat> I, I wouldn't mind finding that out myself let me see. Khalil Lowry Jr. He's lost his last two. He lost to Marcin Prashino and to Ion Kutaleba. Yep. And he and then yes, yeah, so he and then he beat previously Eric Anders. But then he lost to Johnny Walker. So yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's been up and down as as of late. So yeah, but I'm going with the Bolter Gladiator to 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 get his maiden UFC win. That's what I'm going for. Okay. <laughs> Now, <laughs> moving up to the welterweight division, Alex, or well, moving down to the welterweight division, I should say, Alex Morono versus David Zawada. I'm going to chose this fight for that bet. You should have chose this one because I don't know who's going to win. You should have chose this fight for because I really, I'm thinking, I'm like, I don't know who's going to win this one. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going with Alex Morono, and the forfeit would be four shots or to change your picture to Dana White. I'm going with four shots. All right. I'm so going Dana with... White for 48 hours. Okay, Chisanga. I'm going to go with, I think, I think I'll go with David Zavada. I'll go with Zavada. Like, I, I've, Alex Morono, who did he beat last? Was it Cowboy? Was it Cowboy he beat last? I think it might. Yeah, it was Cowboy. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. Or did he fight Pettis and Pettis beat him? No, he beat Pettis. You're right. No, oh, he, he beat Pettis. I think I think he beat Pettis, didn't he? Yeah, it was Pettis, yeah. and before that, Reese McKee. Reese McKee, and okay, so let's see. Yeah, so he beat. No, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, we need to make some informed decisions, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not picking Morono. That I'm not picking. Mar I'm pretty sure he lost that fight. I think he lost. I'm pretty sure he lost to Pettis. Yeah, he no, lost. He lost to Pettis, you're right. Not, I think he lost to I'm picking Zawad. I am not picking Morono. No yeah. disrespect, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not picking him. I'm with you, I'm with you, yeah. Um, Let's yeah. back up, let's back up real quick. You went with... Um, Zavada. Zavada, yeah. but what's your forfeit? Four shots or picture of Dana White for 48 hours? Um, look at Dana, Dana White for 48 hours. Dana, Dana White, okay. Kairos, your forfeit. I'm doing the shots. I'm already like, I'm doing the shots. <laughs> I'm doing the shots. Four, let's go. Okay. Moving up to the heavyweight, uh, co-main Tom Aspinall versus Sergey Spivak. Now this is 
seven shots or change your profile picture to Mike Perry for 72 hours. <laughs> 72 hours, bro. <laughs> what happens if you bet what happens if you bet the profile picture multiple times? Yeah, I was about to say it's just just keep rolling oh, over. That's right. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it, day after day after day, you have to have your profile picture changed for the duration that you've agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going with Tom Aspinall. He's been on a run, especially that um uh it was Arlovsky. Yeah, uh, Arlovsky, Arlovsky, yeah, he, he, yeah, more he did though. idol. Um I'm going with Tom As Tom Aspinall, and if I lose, I'm going seven shots. Okay, all right. How about you, uh Jasanga? I'm going with Tom Aspinall and but uh... <laughs> That's a lot of shots, though, man. For seven seven shots. Shots. Now, does it Wait, all okay. have to be? Does it all have to be in the one sitting? Yes. Oh man! And it's at the beginning of the show. Now, bearing in mind, all at the beginning. Yes. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's a school night, Mike. Tuesday's a school night. You, <laughs> you agreed to the bet. Come on now. <laughs> it's a school night. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. All right. So. So seven shots already change it to Mike Perry. Yeah. For 72 hours. 72 hours. Okay. All right. All right. Fuck it. I'm changing it to Mike Perry for 72 hours. You're out and you're going with Tom Aspinall, right? Yeah, I'm going with Tom Aspinall. I'm confident. Right. Confident in that, in that decision. Kairos. <laughs> what was the first bet? How many shots was the, was the first fight? The two. very first fight. You, are you talking about um, Paddy Pilmet? Yeah, yeah. That was is two, that two right? shots? That was just two shots. Yeah. And then what was the next one? How many shots was, sorry, was that? Sorry, one? that was two shots. Yes. And then the next one was 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 three shots. Three shots or Alex Scafidi. Yes. And the next one was what? The next one was four shots or change your picture to Dana White. And I okay, so I chose Alex. I, I should shots, Alex, shots. So that's two, three, four, five. Oh my God. I can't. <laughs> no, I'm no sucker. I'm no sucker. Shots again. Shots, seven shots again, Tom asked. I am not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you, Mike. I'm doing the shots again. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> oh, my I don't fear okay. you. Okay. You, well, you said it. Okay. So finally, the middleweight main event. Derek Brunson versus Darren Till. The forfeit is 10 shots. Okay, I'm not doing that one. <laughs> shots. That's or show your buttocks to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I, I'm going, I'm going Derek Brunson. And if I lose, I'm showing my buttocks to the camera. Oh my God, <laughs> oh, come on now. Come on, oh, you're, you're, you're mad. Bearing in mind that this goes on YouTube as well as iTunes, sorry, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So there's no <laughs> getting around this. This is now a visual medium, week in, week out. <laughs> so Kairos, Derek Brunson or Darren Till, and what is your forfeit? Yeah. When we start the podcast, you know, like the unofficial start where we're chatting it up. Can yeah. We, can we start drinking as soon as we start with that? Or it's like, all right, three, two, one. Then we start drinking. Three, two, one. Three, three, two, one. It's, it's not before the show. We have to unveil what the forfeits were and yeah. how successful we were with our picks. And then on camera, the forfeits come out. Okay. Okay. But can we do the forfeits as, as the show is going on? So like, oh, we'll say, right, I'm doing my two for losing, for, for, for picking against Patty, right? I'm doing my three for whatever, rather than just, it, what happens if you <laughs> end up with like 12 shots and now uh, you do like- You're gonna be smashed. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that will be the fun in doing this at the beginning of the show, because imagine trying to do a show when you're out of your head. Uh, you know, fuck it, I'm off next week, so let's do it. 10 yeah. shots. 
Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? I'm I'm confident in my pick. Confident oh, my pick. who are you going with? What? The gorilla. Who are you fucking else, mate? <laughs> who fucking else? <laughs> fucking right. Okay. Nah, I'm going with I'm going with my boy Darren Till to get the job done. Get the job done. He's going to put on a good performance against Derek Brunson. People are just thinking, oh, Derek Brunson is going to take him now with the ease. Darren Till has good takedown defense. And I know <laughs> I'm not bringing him up to uh, to rile up Kairos again, but Tyron Woodley tried and failed to take Darren Till down in their uh, 2018 UFC 218. Uh, you're not, no, it was UFC 228, sorry. Uh, but no, wait, knocked Tyler, him Tyler. out. Yeah, so, well, he dropped him. He dropped him and then submitted him, but he tried and he couldn't take him down. Darren Till has a lot better takedown defense than people give him credit for. So if he can keep the fight standing, and I think he would, I think he's learned his lesson from the Robert Whitaker fight when we were talking about Tyron Woodley in terms of activity and volume. That's a problem that we, we've seen with Darren Till as, as of late. In a, uh, as of late, I mean, last, last July against Robert Whitaker. If he upped it by maybe 10%, then maybe he could have won that fight against Robert Whitaker. But I'm confident that the gorilla is going gonna, is gonna to maul Derek Brunson. It's going to maul Derek Brunson. And My worry is Derek Brunson is on a tear right now. I, My worry is Darren Till seems to be chasing titles and belts as opposed to chasing wins. My worry is I just don't see Darren Till being great. I see him being good. But anyway, I, I'm digressing and um, I'm, I'm not allowing Kairos to actually get in. So you're going with Darren Till or 10 shots. Just anger. Ah, oh, I'm going 10 shots, bro. Okay. Man, I can't be, can't be putting these cheeks up on YouTube when I've got all your fans, bro. <laughs> I don't have only fans for clarification, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm putting these cheeks up on YouTube. Come on now. Okay. Kairos Bodley, Darren Till or Derek Brunson, and what is your forfeit? Mike, how many times I got to tell you, I don't fear you. Uh -huh. I'm not afraid of you. Okay. There's nothing you can do to stop me. 10 shots, Darren Till. Ten shots, Darren Till. Ten shots, Darren Till. I don't fear you. What do you guys know that I don't? <laughs> I don't fear no man but God. Yes. <laughs> Next week. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I'm just saying. I can't be out here showing my butt like Tyron Woodley either. Uh, bringing it full circle, Kairos, again. Nice. He's always the butt of the jokes. What can I say? <laughs> you're, you're making an ass at yourself right now. I have to say. Uh, <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm going to be all right. Oh, man. I told you these forfeits would be uh, be hefty. And uh, I cannot wait for this weekend's fights. I mean, not only do we have one championship on Friday, we have KSW also on Saturday, but we yeah. also have some incredible fights coming up at UFC Vegas 36, which we've just run down. Gentlemen, it has been an honor and a privilege to chop it up with you. I cannot wait for the results. I cannot wait to see your faces uh, next week when you're actually uh, smashed <laughs> to bits. <laughs> um, uh, YouTube are gonna take down our account when they see your cheeks online. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a worry. That's wild. I, yeah, I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Because if you do that, MMA tour, it'll be ruthless. ruthless. I already got you better be prepared, Mike. You better be prepared. Okay, that wraps up this edition of Shots Fired. And uh, I guess you're closing out the show. Oh, me? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, people, that brings an end to... I, I can't remember what number show we're on. It must be about 50. It must be about in the 60s now. 68. I think it's 53 or 54. All right. That's into Shots Fired episode 53. Thank you, as always, to my fellow shotters, Mr. Michael Morgan. Bra, Mr. Bra, 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 bra. And Mr. Kyrus Bodley. We missed G this week, and I would have loved to have heard her thoughts on, on the forfeits. I'm sure she'll give her, uh, her thoughts on the forfeits once the podcast comes out. But uh, we look forward to reuniting with her next week, and we look forward to seeing... Well, I think 
by by all accounts, some of us are going to be pretty buzzed next <laughs> next week's episode. So I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are soon. We'll check you next week. Peace.